there fellow pilots and aviation enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. Foggles. Anybody that's ever flown before knows all about the Foggles. So today we're going to be talking about which course to choose to learn how to be a pilot. Sporties or King? Well, you know, it's a really a personal choice. They're both very good. Of course, you also have Glime, and we'll talk about Glime in a moment. Uh, I studied with the King course, and uh, I scored 100. And, of course, I also uh, bought some a lot of sporty stuff, too. Uh, and uh, so what you really want to do is go online, take a look, see which one suits your needs, which one you feel more comfortable with, uh, they're both good. So if you're looking to get into aviation and become a pilot, I highly recommend you join the AOPA, Online Pilots and Owners Association. Uh, you'll get a nice magazine. There's a wealth of information there that uh, you can get from the AOPA. I recommend you listen to uh, uh, their podcasts. Uh, one of my favorites is There I Was by the Air Safety Institute. Um, AOP is an, an important part. They're protecting your freedom to fly. Uh, another book that you're going to want to get is the uh, Airplane Flying Handbook. Uh, this is really indispensable. And what I recommend you do is, you know, these courses aren't exactly cheap. Okay, let's face it. Uh, if you're looking to learn to fly, then I would uh, just spend uh, a couple of dollars and get myself a uh, an airplane flying handbook, study that before I even go out to the airport and talk to an instructor or get into an airplane. This way at least you have some kind of knowledge of, of what's going on in the airplane and have an idea of that. Uh, I spoke about Glime, uh, Glime Aviation. They have uh, audios uh, that I loaded up and I'd listen to constantly in the car. Um, aviation is a broad body of knowledge. Your private pilot handbook, um, this is the flight maneuver manual. You also have the uh, comprehensive text for pilots as well. And of course you're going to want to have one of the most important things is aviation weather. Now the weather affects everything that we do in flying. And it's just not like a scheduled airliner where you can take off a bad weather and expect to get to where you're going. You want to make sure that the weather is suitable for your flying and, and for your mission. All right, so. As far as the couple of other items I have for you today is the manual that you're going to want to have for your aircraft. Okay. Most of us start in a Skyhawk, a 172. These are high wing aircraft. Very forgiving, very easy airplanes to fly. Um, you normally would be soloing in around 20 hours, 30 hours, some people less, some people more. Depends on, you know, your aptitude for it, we'll say. Um, and then certainly, uh, I would uh, get myself uh, from the ASA is the Visualized Flight Maneuvers Handbook. That's a great little handbook. Uh, I, I learned to fly, I got my pilot's license in 2003. I still refer to this. In fact, I did have to do a check ride in a, uh, a new airplane just uh, yesterday. And I've been, you know, if you're watching my channel, you know I'm mostly flying missions. I'm flying into places with cameras on the plane, and I'm not really doing a lot of time practicing the basic maneuvers lately. So I spent some time with an instructor yesterday over at the airport and she uh, gave me a little shakedown and you know, I, I needed to practice. But the nice thing about this one is this is going to show you exactly what you need to do. The maneuvers, the speeds, what the instruments and dials are going to look like. All right. So that's that with that. The next thing, the foggles, you'll get that. That's to simulate instrument uh, flight. Get yourself a nice log book. Okay, uh, you're going to want to record everything. I, I like paper. I like old school. I like to have my instructor's signature on the piece of paper. Now, I do fly with ForeFlight, and uh, I have a Stratus that uh, goes along with it. So, uh, if you're going to get yourself a, uh, an iPad, uh, get one that's uh, phone capable because it'll have the GPS built into it. Um, if you don't, then you're going to be completely reliant on an exterior device to give you the GPS coordinates. Okay, So that would be something I would recommend. I wouldn't get one that's too big. I use a yoke mount and I use a ram mount is what I'm using for my uh, aviation with that. And I'm pretty sure that most of the instructors today are still going to ask you to get 
the old trusty E6B flight computer. This is a cool little thing. It's just a slide rule that's kind of round, and on the back you configure a wind correction angle so that you know where the wind is coming, so you can crab for whatever the situation is uh, as you are flying. And then, of course, you'll need a plotter. And uh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be required to learn how to use a chart. Uh, as far as uh, this is a this is a North uh, this is a New York sectional. Now I learned flying under Class B airspace. It's complicated airspace, and I'll do an airspace video uh, on a different uh, day for you. And uh, but nothing like paper. You can lay this out on a big table, and you can figure out where you're going, what you're doing, uh, and it's not limited to a small area. Um, and then the the chart may seem really complicated, but it really comes down to this one little panel right here. If you can memorize everything on that panel, and it's not too hard after a while, you'll be able to read the chart lickety-split. Easy peasy. This is a uh, standard VFR chart. Then there's also what's called a terminal area chart. Uh, this is a New York terminal area chart, because that's the area that I live in. And this will give you detail on the major airports so you can see exactly what's going on. This one is a nice one because it's the uh, Hudson River VFR corridor. And in one of my other videos, I spoke about uh, a flight into the corridor where I went into IMC briefly. Um, as a low-time pilot, it was uh, a little unnerving, but because I was very well versed in what was going on and I was fresh, freshly minted, I had oh, probably about 90 or 95 hours, so I was flying constantly. I had my own airplane at that point. And uh, what a great look. It was a 1962 172C which had the, uh, the Continental 0300 six-cylinder engine. Well, you couldn't kill that. You weren't going anywhere really fast. I actually flew from North Jersey all the way down to first flight in North Carolina. So that's my uh, little take for you today. So um, another thing that I would also finally recommend that you get, and this is an old one. They look a lot nicer now, the newer ones. But get yourself a NAVCOM. Uh, when you get down to the airport, you can listen to the traffic. You get familiar with the calls are. I also recommend uh, a lot of uh, different YouTube uh, videos. Uh, I like Martin Pauly. He's very good. In the Hangar is nice to watch. Uh, you've got Driver One. He's flying a jet. Uh, that's really nice to listen to. But most of all, I would go right to the AOPA. And then another one that I would recommend is Emory Riddle uh, down in Florida. They have some really great videos online, too. So thanks a lot for stopping in today. I, I hope that you've gained something, and I hope that I've been able to share my love of aviation with you. Women in aviation, this week, you know, we're celebrating. So, uh, you know, you're not alone if you want to be a pilot and you're a woman. Come on aboard. There's plenty of us out there. So, keep it simple, silly, and fly safe.